Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Shira Leibowitz. Here we go. All right, I've known you, geez, like we've known each other for years on social media. So it's it's cool to just be able to sit down and uh, just chat and uh, ask you some questions. And you actually have a new book and it's linked down below. It's not available yet, but you can get it for pre-order. It's called Havens of Hope, Ideas for Redesigning Education from the COVID-19 Pandemic. And I probably nobody thought about doing this, right? Like, right? Like, no, you know, we're just, I was like, COVID, what are you talking about? So like, t tell us, give us a little sneak peek about the book. What's the book about? And uh, give, give us a, the one minute trailer to the book before we get into the questions. Absolutely. The book traces my own experiences and 24 other programs that not only navigated through pandemic, but got better right. and traces what it was that we did to get better through these really challenging times so that we can continue to transform, not because we have to, like we did during right. COVID, but because we choose to. I, I love that because I think, you know, one of the conversations I've been having with a lot of people is that are you trying to get back to 2019 or are you trying to create something better? Right. And I think, and, and there's, there's days where I'm going to be honest with you, I'm like, let's just go back to 2019. Right. And yeah. you know, but I think there, there is opportunities in what we can create for not only for kids, but for ourselves, for ourselves. That, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to checking out the book uh, when it's available, but let's get into the three questions here. So uh, Shira, we, we've talked for a long time and I know that you've, you know, influenced a lot of people in education. You've been in education 25 plus years. So when you look back at your career, you know, whether as a student, you know, whether it's your time, you know, as a colleague to many, who is a teacher that inspired you and why? I'm going to say my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Jackson. Mrs. Jackson would not um, be what, what I would think of as as who I would have thought that I would connect it to in this way. But she was she was toward the end of her career. Um, and I've been doing this a long time. So this is a long mm -hmm. time ago. So she taught through storytelling. And it felt rambling at times, but it was powerful. And she told stories about her own life. And so she brought history alive to me in a way that nobody ever has. She taught the Depression by talking about what it was like and what her family did to get through right. those times. And she connected um, to what was happening in the current world in this very loving, authentic way that was only her. Nobody else would speak the way she did or act the way she did. Um, and one thing that stands out in my mind that that has has shaken me since is we were using as slang the term evil, saying things like my mom is evil because she makes me eat broccoli. Right. And um, she wanted us to understand what evil is. So mm -hmm. she said, you can't, you can't use that term lightly. Evil would be, and she kind of paused. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Paused and said, evil would be somebody walking into a room, into a school and shooting children. That was the worst thing she could imagine. Mm -hmm. And now having experience, not personally experienced, but right. in the new experience school shootings, I, I think back as the worst thing that she could have imagined has become something that happens in our reality. And I, I think about her a lot and mm -hmm. her, her heart and her connection. Yeah. I, I think that, um, that authenticity is something that, uh, something I really gravitate towards, um, in what I'm listening and people that I connect with. Uh, something I try to do and, and you know whether sometimes you know it's good or bad and I think sometimes uh, being ourselves can kind of throw people off but I, I, I actually um, I remember ha having um, uh, I was having a rough day and one of my one of my students said uh, something like really kind of rude that day I'm like hey I I'm really sorry I'm just having a hard day because my dog just died and they kind of like were shocked and that they all of a sudden saw me as a person right not just like as, a, as this like, you know, t teacher that has no life, has nothing outside of the school. And I think sometimes showing that authenticity is, you know, is what connects us to people and they, you know, see us beyond the profession, beyond that. So uh, I'm going to give a little shout out to Miss Jackson. I was going to play Miss Jackson, my favorite, one of my favorite songs of all time. But give a little shout out there too. So I appreciate that. 
So, okay. So now you, you've been an administrator for a long time. You actually are the founder and CEO, which is a pretty cool title, right? Obviously you have to find something to become that. Yeah. And so of uh, Discovery Village, it's a childcare center. And we'll talk more about that in our other podcast. Um, so when you think about your career as an administrator, who is an administrator that you really look up to and, and, and someone who made an impact on you and why? Pat Kelly. So Pat Kelly, I, I had accepted a position as a K to five principal in a school that was, it was an independent Jewish school, K to 12. And Pat Kelly was the assistant head of school at the time. Mm -hmm. She also stayed only a short time and then retired. Um, this was a Jewish school and Pat Kelly was a former nun. And she brought this beautiful difference, but similarity. And pushed us to connect to what's the heart of spirit beyond mm -hmm. the externals. And she was also an artist and, and I wasn't, uh, I, I like to write, but, but mm -hmm. visual arts was not something that, that I, I felt comfortable with. And the aesthetics of the school mattered to her profoundly. And she taught mm -hmm. me so deeply about environment. Uh, and I, I, I would connect to things through storytelling and through words. And she connected through the visuals. And that changed the way dramatically that I view the world, looking to spirit and, and looking to aesthetics as a representation of spirit. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually interesting because I think about uh, like pre presenting. And how that is to me something I'm really, you know, obviously I love. It's something I feel I'm meant to do. But really what shifted for me is when I started looking at as an art, right? And when you start looking at what you create and, you know, there is an artistry in storytelling. There's an artistry in you creating that school, right? Like when you think about, because it's not just a built, like it's, it's more than a building, right? There's a feeling that comes with it. And I think, you know, art invokes feeling. And so there is something really powerful about that. So we're going to give a little shout out to Pat Kelly. <laughs> So, all right. Last question. So you've you've gone. You know we've we're you know we're going to talk about your book, Havens of Hope, and all the stuff that you learned. But if you can go back to your first year of teaching, and you think about all the stuff that you've learned, if you can go talk to yourself as a first year educator, what advice would you give to yourself, and why? Trust yourself and go to the essence. Uh, learn and be inspired from people, but be you and be mm -hmm. at your core and find the way to always bring you to whatever situation you're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I, I think a lot of times that that's a pretty easy thing not to do, right? We, we don't go with our gut. We get a little freaked out and sometimes it's, it's absolutely the, the worst uh, thing you can actually do. And so it's amazing that you went with your gut to build this brand new school in 2019. You stuck with your gut when things went a little bit wrong. So like, it's probably through this experience that you, you know, and it not not wrong because of anything you did, but, you know, because of what the world was going through and, uh, you know, kind of just trusting that process. I remember actually one of my superintendents, um, uh, Dr. Marilyn Campbell, just absolutely uh, someone who's really had a huge impact on me. Uh, sometimes when going through uncertainty, she's like, just stay the course, stay the course, yeah. right? You got to kind of trust what you're doing. And it felt like once you kind of just, you know, felt that comfort in some of the things that you're making decisions with. I'm actually thinking about this and some of the personal decisions I'm making in my life right now uh, that are, are a little terrifying, but you know, kind of what's the vision where are you trying to get to? And even when it gets really rocky to kind of just stay that course. So I, I love it. And uh, I, I'm excited to uh, talk to you more about your new book, Havens of Hope and uh, make sure everyone, if you're interested take, uh, take a look, uh, the, the pre the pre-order link is down below. And talk about your, your school that you created in, uh, in Dis Discovery Village and Child Care Center, you know, for, for the littles. So I'm excited to talk to you about that. So uh, thanks, Shira, for being here today. And everyone, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And, and thank you so much uh, for your time. I'm trying to find the button.